we meet again at last. The circle is now complete. What's the world coming to? Well, you got a problem with what I did, Anthony? Oh, no. Hey, no. Fucking rat anyway. So family's all rats. 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 Could have grew up this to be a rat. Stupid bastard. I can't fucking believe it. Yeah, I'm real sorry your mom blew up, Ricky. Now you're gonna dig the fucking thing. You're gonna dig the hole. You're gonna do it. I got no fucking line. You're gonna do it. Fuck this. I think the fucking hole. I don't give a fuck. Fuck. I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was pure and simple. Jesus Christ. Mister, you okay in there? Ah, put some vintage coffee around here someplace. Have you any idea what the cost of your actions is? What their effect might be? Oh, you need to give them hope. What do you give them? We give them happiness. And they give us authority. What's going on, friends? Luke and Myers here for the Cinefellas Podcast, episode 50. Holy shit! <laughs> 50 episodes we've done here on the podcast. Lots of great interviews, conversations I've had uh, with my good mate, Henry Hill, and then also Niall Fortner, um, you know, interviewing a lot of talent, a really fantastic writer. Our best writer here at Cinefellas, and I can't believe it's a milestone, really. You know, starting with the podcast, Henry and I, just really shitty audio and, and not really having a clear direction as to what we're going to be talking about. It's really grown. We've definitely progressed over the 50 episodes, and it's been a fantastic journey. So thank you all for listening on the podcast and following us each and every day. We love you guys very, very much, and we do this all for you guys, uh, sharing our love of entertainment, movies, and TV and everything in the entertainment business. And thank you for joining us on this journey. We have a lot of great content coming up in this month. And I can't believe October is over. We just did 31 days of horror. We had 26 videos up on our YouTube channel. We were aiming for 31, uh, but I went on vacation for a week at the end of October. It's my wife and I's anniversary. And I needed a mental break from work and uh, just from movies for like five days. We got lost up in Northern Michigan, no cell service just getting lost in the woods, and we stayed at this really awesome ski resort. It reminded me much of the Overlook Hotel in The Shining, so I had a really great vibe and atmosphere to it. Not to mention, there was only like 10 people staying there in this entire resort. It's their off-season, and uh, luckily we didn't get hit with snow until after leaving that place. Otherwise, we would have been stranded up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, uh, but really had a great time on vacation, really had a great time in October. I talked about a lot of New and old horror flicks, and hopefully you guys checked out a lot of those uh, reviews. I went down to Springfield and hung out with my good mate, Henry Hill, here at Cinefellas. Hung at his house for like three days. We went to the movies and shot a bunch of videos. We reviewed Are You Afraid of the Dark? Uh, we did the Shining 4K giveaway. We reviewed Zombieland Double Tap. We had a podcast and a lot of great other content. I uh, just reviewed The Lighthouse, which is definitely one of my favorite movies of the year really great horror flick and i'm still trying to comprehend everything that robert eggers threw at us and then on halloween we had a halloween special henry and i shared our top five horror movies to watch during the halloween season so hopefully you guys check that out if you haven't already go over there to our youtube channel subscribe like our videos comment on our videos and you know give us some feedback but besides that we had a lot of great content on our website throughout the month we had a lot of written reviews by niall fortner the man the myth the legend yeah! And Kevin Muller, he's a good friend of ours on the East Coast, always writing, you know, really great reviews, his thoughts on movies. Uh, I just posted his Gemini Man review. That movie stars Will Smith and directed by Ang Lee. He was the Oscar-winning director for The Life of Pi. Uh, but that uh, review is over on our website. And on the website, we have a lot of, like, official poster and trailers just released for upcoming movies, which includes Inherit the Viper, starring Josh Hartnett. Ooh, I missed that guy from the 90s. What a heartthrob. But he's in a movie called Inherit the Viper, like I just said. Comes out in theaters January 10th. We also have another movie coming out called Mob Town, starring David Arquette, which I just saw him in the new Creep Show episode, which I absolutely loved. I love that dude. And obviously him being in Scream, the Scream franchise, as Dewey. I just love that actor. He's a great dude. So he's starring alongside Jamie Lynn Sigler, 
Jennifer Esposito called Mob Town. Got a gangster feel to it. He's holding a Tommy gun on the poster of the movie. Uh, and that hits theaters December 13th. But besides that, we got a bunch of other reviews on our website, on uh, movie news and TV news on our Facebook and Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. And uh, we try to keep up to date with that. Sometimes on the weekends we get a little busy, but, uh, you know, during the week we're on top of that shit. So check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and also our YouTube channels. You know, subscribe, like us, follow us on this journey. But tonight, I'm talking to one of my favorite actors, a guy I've been following since, what, 2003, 2004, when he was in the OC. Right back where we started from, California. As Trey Atwood, I'm talking about Logan Marshall Green, and I'm talking about his brand new film, his directorial debut, which he also wrote the script for. I'm talking about Adopt a Highway, and that was put out by Blumhouse. Holy shit, how awesome is that? Blumhouse, if you guys remember, put out Upgrade last year, which was one of my favorite movies of the year, which Logan Marshall Green starred in. He played Gray, a fantastic sci-fi action movie, reminded me much of like the original Terminator but a really fantastic film, really great guy. Again, I've been following this dude forever since, you know, I was in high school, 2003, 2004, and uh, he's really progressed over his career, and now he's in the director's chair in the new film starring Ethan Hawke. Uh, we love Ethan Hawke. Uh, Adopt a Highway. So the premise of Adopt a Highway starring Ethan Hawke, he plays an ex-felon, and he finds a, a baby in a dumpster outside of his work, and he you know, kind of gets attached to the baby, doesn't know what to do. He's an ex-con calling the cops. He's like, yeah, I just found this baby. It doesn't look too good for him, especially when he's on parole. So really sets up a really fantastic story. I really love the story in this movie. Very emotional. It brought out a lot of emotions for me just because I fell in love with the story and what this guy's going through. Being put in prison for so long in California back then, you know, the three-strike rule. He was essentially locked up for like 20 years, over 20 years for having an ounce of weed in California. That's so odd because today it's legal. You get it legalized everywhere, including here in Illinois, so it's not a big deal. But it was his third strike, and he got locked up for a long time, so he's finally getting out, um, trying to get back on his feet, trying to you know get a job and, and get through daily life. It's completely different when you're locked up in a cell for that many years. It's hard to get acclimated to your environment, to the things around you. So I thought Ethan Hawke did a really fantastic job in this film playing Russell Millings and uh, again uh, just a really great story Logan Marshall Green really knocked this one out of the park and directorial debut this is a film you guys must check out it has a lot of great actors in it and Blumhouse we love those guys Jason Blum and Blumhouse always putting out really fantastic movies mostly horror but they do do other dramas and sci-fi and other genres so Adopt a Highway I really had a great time with this and today I had the chance to interview Logan Marshall Green we kind of have similar names so it was fun talking to a guy named Logan Hello, Logan. And in the interview, I got to talk to Logan, you know, being a fan of his for so long, loving Upgrade from last year, talking to him and how he came up with the concept and idea of Adopt a Highway and, you know, jumping from acting to directing and writing, you know, it's completely different. You're in front of the camera, now he's behind the camera and coming up with the whole premise and storyline. And also talking to him about his experience directing and writing a film, working with Ethan Hawke. How awesome is that for your first film? And just how they collaborated and it really worked on this film and made something really special this is a film that i would consider award-winning that's how good it is i really had a blast at this movie and it pulls on your heartstrings and you feel for this man ex-con finding a baby and what he needs to do and we also discussed a lot of great other stuff about this film and just him in general so i had an absolute blast with logan marshall green been a fan forever i was really excited for this interview and hopefully you guys enjoy it this is my interview with Uncle Logan Marshall Green. Yo, hey, Logan. Logan. Hey, Logan, you have an awesome I'm name, good. <laughs> yeah, man, you got a pretty cool name, too. How old are you? Uh, 34. See, still haven't found a Logan that's older than me except one. Oh, yeah? Who's that, Wolverine? <laughs> yeah, you got it, man. Nice to meet you, my friend. We've been huge fans of your work for a long time, since the OC days, so it's a pleasure talking to you today. Oh, oh wow, man. You are uh, – you're patient. <laughs> <laughs> you are patient. For sure. 
Um, sure, dude. Yeah. This is, that's a like long a, time ago, man. That's a long time ago. We used to watch it every. I think it was Thursday nights. It was on. Huge fan. Um, but yeah, we've been following the work a long time. One of our favorite films of 2018 was Upgrade. We absolutely love that flick. So uh, congrats on oh, that. Oh, nice, one. thanks. Thank you. Um, so, so first of all, how did you come up with the concept or idea of Adopt a Highway? Well, I came up with the idea of Adopt a Highway, or I should say, first it started with character. Because as an actor, that's right. kind of where where my strengths are, and I. I, I, at least, I don't know about others, but I tend to run from things I fear or are weaknesses. Um, but that said, I also knew my weaknesses um, were narrative that existed outside of genre or explosions or sci-fi or horror. Those are things I know, love, and can do uh, in my sleep. But I knew I was not a seasoned writer or a good one, so I had to kind of go with truth, my own truth, and work with that. Um, and so the character slash Adopt a Highway was born from how lost I was as a father. You know, as a new father. I became a father almost overnight. I fell in love mm-hmm. with my daughter. And at the same time, though, I was so afraid of her because I didn't want to mm-hmm. lose her, break her, um, you know, uh, let her get hurt. I just, I, I didn't know what to do. I, I looked online. There was no handbook. You know, on Google for fatherhood. Yeah, man, I'm with you. I had a so that's where it came years. from, man. You know, it's like I wanted to tell a story about what it means to be lost as a father, because I think there are a bunch of us out there. Yeah, dude, I'm totally one of them. And I watched the film this morning. There's so many emotions that came out of me. I got like a little teary eyed, and I'm not an emotional person at all. And it like hit me, and like it's just a well crafted film, like writing and directing. I loved it. Thank you. Thank you, um, truly, man. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. What made you want to make the jump from acting to directing slash writing? Um, well, I, you know, I come from a family of theater directors, and I directed some theater in my past, and I certainly want to direct more theater in my future. Um, I have a lot of photography in my background, um, and I, I. I haven't existed as an actor in a trailer. I have existed as an actor, an annoying actor, who just stands on set and secretly shadows every department I can every day I'm there. And I've been doing that for 20 years until finally my team came up about, I don't know, seven years ago or so and said, you got to start writing because it's time for you to get behind the camera. And, And I had been developing another script, and it was really one of those, Right, you know, it was one of those moments where you're writing your second script so you can go make your first script, you know? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Because they are, they're a little more demanding of finances. And as a first time filmmaker, um, you know, I needed to at least show I could make a film, you know, from top mm-hmm. to bottom. And, uh, and then I heard that you're not supposed to show your first film to anyone. So here we are. And I guess I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you did hell of a job, my friend. I will say that. With that being said, what was the overall experience like, you know, directing, writing your first film, and do you think you'll do it again? Well, I know I want to do it again, and I want to do it again immediately, but the question will be, is anyone going to let me? <laughs> that'll be, uh, that'll be, that remains to be seen. Um, the experience, the overall general experience of uh, directing my first feature, writing my first feature, is one of abject horror and learning on the fly and learning every day and kind of just walking into work and saying, let go. You're going to have to be a student as much as you're going to be the teacher. And then knowing that you don't know what you don't know and knowing all that, all those things you don't know are out there somewhere. (laughs) Um, It's a frightening thing. And uh, it's one I failed at. At times, and sometimes one I walk with Panesh. But I can tell you that watching Ethan, who's also a director and had just come from Sundance, selling a film that he directed and wrote, watching him operate and be so beautifully attached to character, so outside himself, I learned more as an actor. And I did as a director for me, in many ways. And that's saying something, because I learned 
a lot as a director. I owe him so much, you know. Right, and that's pretty impressive to see Ethan Hawke on your first, you know, flick. And, I, yeah, I was going to ask you what it was like working with him, and did you guys collaborate a lot on the character or just kind of let him go at it? Um, well, you know, I, we the, as the character's written, it's pretty specific on page, but that said, um, Ethan had to be on board. He had to see the same guy or he had to see the same heart. He, he had come from the same place as I did in many ways, but what he would eventually do is elevate the character beyond anything I could have hoped to write. And, um, you know, and most of my directing in Ethan was wafting a secret or mm-hmm. wafting just a little bit of a sanding down if I, he felt ever defensive. Because, you know, Ethan's an alpha. Ethan's a leader. Ethan is an incredibly strong individual who knows what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> so that's what makes this performance so beautiful. Is he's playing a guy who doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Ethan's a father of five. He knows, <laughs> he knows exactly how to hold a baby. He knows exactly how to birth a baby. He knows exactly what the baby needs. So you are looking at the ideal number one on the call sheet. Mm-hmm. Because what he's doing and the balls he's juggling in that role are beyond anything you're even understanding while you're watching it because so, he disappears so so seamlessly in that role. And yet you you have no idea the balls I asked him to juggle with a baby and just yeah. letting it roll, you know? <laughs> These And not just goes, improv. We were not just – now, now, granted, I was – the CGI budget, all the explosions, the sex, the drugs, the rock and roll that aren't in there, well, all that's in the baby budget, meaning <laughs> we were not going to frame that baby out. We were going to live and die in this relationship. It's the core, the crux of the film. Mm-hmm. And so when the scenes are written that he, he, Russell Millings leans over the baby, the key falls out, the baby reaches up and grabs it, you have to simply get lucky. And that means also having a, having a mother of these kids – being, um, you know, that's that's who I auditioned. I didn't audition babies. I auditioned moms and dads. You know, mm-hmm. and I, the thing I was looking for was to make sure the twins, because I knew we had to work with twins due to our right. hours. Uh, mm-hmm. All I knew is that I didn't want the twins to be firstborn. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right? For sure. I wanted a mom who wasn't as fresh, so precious. You know, and <laughs> right. what we found in in the suckers were in Sarah was oh, uh, was an incredible creative who was just another teammate. And wanted to roll her sleeves up and allowed us um, to work with her children um, in a healthy, uh, um, absolutely, uh, you know, of course, correct way. But she wanted to be part of making this story the greatest it could be. And so what you're not seeing are, is Sarah at the edge of the bed just with her arms out in case her little baby rolls off the bed. She's right at the edge of frame. You know, little things like that. These things make or break sets, make yeah. or break um, movies, and it all begins and ends with the number one on that call sheet, Ethan Hawke. The reason people are willing to put their personal lives on hold and tell your story are guys like Ethan Hawke. The reason people are willing to put their babies on the edge of a bed who are so yeah. invested in telling the story, no matter how big or small the story is, that every single person around him is infected with creation. That's fantastic. And that is why That's Ethan Hawke is the best number one out there. For sure. For sure, dude. He gets better and better with each movie. He's a fantastic artist. And what he brings to this movie is so good. And I'm going to be really pissed if you guys don't win any awards for this, honestly, because it's so good. <laughs> oh, man, you're sweet. Your mouth to God's ears. For me, I just want people <laughs> to see it. And I want us to start understanding that forgiveness is an option. Becoming a species is an option. Stop going to our corners and arming ourselves. And let's start to come together. You know, there's a lot of litigious nature out there right now and indictments. This is not an indictment. You know? There's only so much indictments out there left, you know? We, yeah, sure. We're going to get to a point where we can't indict ourselves out of our our problems anymore, you know? <laughs> right. No, I totally agree with you. So. All right. One more, one more question.
much to my friend. Uh, i got to let you go. Uh, do you have any other upcom- upcoming projects in the works that we should be on the lookout for? Yeah, I, uh, I've got a series coming out next year. It's a great one with uh, Taylor Kitsch and Michael C. Hall and the amazing Nina Haas uh, that's called Shadow Play. It is sexy, fun, and it's definitely going to be coming to a TV near you. Holy shit. Hell yeah. Can't wait for that. Sounds like an off cast as well. Uh, it's, it's, it's going to be fun. I think you're going to like it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Full shadow play. Well, yeah. Shadow play. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. It was a pleasure talking to you, uh, today, my friend. I really had a blast with this film. Yeah, can't right back at you, man. Yeah, I can't wait for everybody thank to you. see this. You have, a, you have a good rest of your day. I'll, uh, post this next week and I'll, uh, stick on it. Awesome, man. Spread the good word. Thanks again. Thanks, I, will. I will, my friend. You have a good day. You too. Bye. <laughs> So that was my interview with Logan Marshall Green. What did you guys think? What did you like about it? That was probably one of my favorite interviews I've done thus far. I've interviewed a lot of people over the past 10 years, a lot of actors in the horror industry, um, producers, directors, actors, actresses. But this is definitely uh, top of the list for me. And Logan Marshall Green was everything I expected. He's funny, smart, witty, uh, very informative, and a really great conversation. You know, sometimes I forget I'm interviewing them. I just feel like I'm talking to a friend, a friend from high school. And that's how it felt with Logan Marshall Green. Uh, Definitely one of my favorite interviews to date. And again, I love this movie so much. I'm very excited for you guys to see this film, Adopt a Highway, starring Ethan Hawke. And Adopt a Highway was released on Friday, November 1st, so definitely go check that out if you guys have not seen this. Definitely support it. Give it a chance. Uh, You know, this is Logan's directorial debut, and he also wrote the script. Um, And I think you guys will fall in love with the story as much as I did. And and also pulled out a lot of emotions for myself. And I think you guys will feel the same way, just getting attached to this story. Seeing this guy, his life was taken away from him for over 20 years just for having weed, an ounce of weed. And Ethan Hawke's character doing what he thinks best in that situation and how everything really turns out in the end. It was a really fantastic ending to the film as well. But I had a really great time with this interview. I absolutely love Logan Marshall Green. Consider him a good friend now. I'll probably keep in touch. And i um, really looking forward to his future work, future projects. And hopefully he directs again because this guy's got something special. And his directorial debut, you can definitely see that um, he's not just an actor. He can be a director and writer and put out some really great films that come from the heart. We're coming up this month for Cinefellas in November. No shave November. Fuck that. I'm not shaving. We have a lot of great content hitting our website and social media platforms. A lot of great reviews hidden on our YouTube channel. I'm really excited uh, for... Dr. Sleep, that comes out next week on the 8th. I will be going to see that and posting my review right away. One of the greatest horror films ever made, for sure, and it holds up over time. So I'm interested to see Mike Flanagan's take on the book, Dr. Sleep, which is the sequel to The Shining. And I'm sure it's going to be top-notch because Mike Flanagan is one of my favorite new horror directors. Everything he puts out is golden. He has such a unique style to his filmmaking, the color schemes he uses, like the blues, lots of dark colors, you know, and the haunting of Hill House in his films. And also in the upcoming Dr. Sleep, it looks like the same kind of color scheme. And he really knows how to direct how to use cinematography, beautiful cinematography, and you know, also capture a lot of the scenes from the original Shining that uh, we could see in the trailer, including the twins and a young Danny riding his bike around that Overlook Hotel. And, and also in the trailer, seeing an adult Danny stick his head through the door at the Overlook Hotel, just like his dad, Jack Torrance, played by Jack Nicholson. And I'm a huge fan of Ewan McGregor, and I think he's going to knock this performance out of the park. So far, the earlier reviews have been praising this film, a really solid sequel to The Shining, and Mike Flanagan did a great job. So I have no doubts in my mind this is going to be probably one of my favorite films of the year, so I'll be checking that out next week and reviewing that for our YouTube channel. Besides that, we got more Fellas giveaways coming up, movies, digital codes. We're going to be giving out to one lucky follower out there, so stay tuned for that more reviews on our website and YouTube channel, and other great content hitting the interwebs. This is Logan Meyer signing out from Cinefellas Studios, Cinefellas Podcast, episode 50. Until the next podcast and interview. Cheers! Love those wild rascals. Love Big Ray's barbecue and automotive. (laughs) 